Alright guys, we're back staring at my engine bay, and in this video we are going to do a quick walk around of my garage. I know you guys have seen different cars in the background of my videos, or maybe like on my Instagram stories and stuff, you see me driving different cars, and you guys ask, what is that? So, I'm going to show you all of the cars I have, and I'm kind of going to explain why I feel like I have the best recipe for a car guy garage. And honestly, it's not that complicated, it just takes time and money to kind of build up getting to multiple cars and everything and figuring out your plan. Uh, for me, I started out like a lot of you guys, you know, I had one car, it was an economy car, nothing really special, and I wanted to modify it. So, you know, I started building it up, put some bolt-ons on it, lowered it, and that was my daily driver, my car for everything, you know, so I drove it to work, for groceries, any weather, any time of day, anywhere I wanted to go, that was my car. But eventually that started to suck, right? Because if there was like a really big job I wanted to do on the car, I had to drop it off at a mechanic and go get a rental car or something. If the car broke, you know, I had to start bumming rides and, you know, it just wasn't really ideal. And eventually that car got totaled and that's when I decided to use the insurance money to not just buy a car to do everything. You know, that really wasn't for me. I went ahead and bought a project car and then I bought a daily driver. And that was a lot better because with my project car, I didn't care if it was parked. I could tinker with it forever. I could save up money and dump a bunch of money into it. And it didn't matter as much to me because I didn't feel like, you know, I'm driving this expensive project around all the time. And I still had my reliable daily driver so I could do runs in it, do whatever I needed to do. It just worked really well. But eventually that got boring because I'm still a car guy, right? And so, you know, when you're driving this daily beater, it's not as much fun as driving something that's a project. And so that's why eventually I stepped up and got a fun street car as well. And that's kind of like my recipe, I feel like, for the perfect car guy garage. You want just a reliable daily driver, you know, something that you can haul stuff with, take your family around, whatever. You want a fun street car that, you know, you can lightly modify, but it's still pretty reliable. Maybe you don't drive it every day, but it's something that you know. If you need an outlet, it should be there and you can go drive with friends or whatever. And then you've got your project, and that's the car that you don't care if it's parked. It could take you three years to finish it, five years to finish it, whatever the case may be. That's your car just to tinker with, to dump money into, and kind of have an outlet for that as well. And that's whatever you're into. If you're into drag racing, road racing, just having a show car, drifting, you know, that's your project. So, yeah, that's kind of my recipe for the perfect car guy garage. And I feel like I've kind of gotten there, thankfully, and at this point, I'm just going to kind of upgrade each car over time. And so you can build this up however you want. If you're into JDM cars, European cars, American cars, whatever, you can build your garage up with your budget, and over time, it'll just get better and better and better. So yeah, I'll go ahead and walk you guys around the garage and show you the cars that I have and kind of why I like each car, and then, you know, you guys can keep the discussion going in the comments if you think I should change anything if you're interested in doing something similar to this or whatever you know we can keep the conversation going so the first car is over here um, this is my wife's car so this is her daily driver this is the car that she uses for everything she's not really into cars so she doesn't need anything special but I have had Volkswagens in the past and this has the same engine drivetrain everything that I'm extremely familiar with so that's why we got it. Um, it's been really reliable. It's gotten really good gas mileage. It's got like a 19 gallon fuel tank, so it can go almost 500 miles to a tank of gas. And so everything about it just works really well. Then next we have the 440i. And this of course is the car that you guys see the most of. Um, this is my fun street car. So I don't do anything to this car that I feel like will take it off of the road for too long, but I do like park it in winter. Um, you know, I only drive it when the weather's good because it's specifically to have fun with. So I don't enjoy the idea of limping this car around in snow or rain or, you know, whatever the case may be. So I drive this car when I want to and I don't drive it when I don't want to. It's pretty much just a fun street car that I can drive whenever I can enjoy it with friends or whatever. Now, this is also the first brand new car I've ever owned. So it's the first car that I've pretty much touched every single bolt and done everything to myself. So I'm really proud of that and I know that I can keep this car for a long time because it's built to my spec. I've modified it exactly how I want to and I know the whole history about it. So that's extremely satisfying just being a car guy. I'm not worried about the value. I'm not worried about the resale or who's going to have it next. I'm just basically buying it for myself to enjoy it and 
whatever happens to it, all the depreciation and stuff, that's just a part of the money that I'm putting into my hobby. So that's how I look at this car. Now this is my third car. This is a 2010 BMW X5. Uh, this is my beater, family hauler, you know, daily driver, whatever you want to call it. I really like this car just because it does everything that I need to. It is a really good workhorse. It's all wheel drive, so it can get around in any kind of weather. It's relatively reliable. It has the N52, so it had a couple oil leaks and stuff when I bought it, but I put about 200 bucks in it just to clean everything up and bring it back to, you know, a perfect state. And now I've just pretty much been driving it. So I do like this car a lot. It's also got a lot of creature comforts. Actually, I'll just take you guys inside and show you kind of all the options and stuff it came with. All right, so this is the inside of the X5 and it's an E-Series car. So like anything else, you know, if you've had an E90 or whatever, then you're probably pretty familiar with how this looks. But the car itself has been great, you know, and it's got a lot of creature comforts. It's got, you know, heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats, massage seats. I've got the surround cameras, so I can see basically all around the car. If I unfold the mirrors, it shows, you know, where the car is parked in my garage. So this is a really nice car. You know, we bought it with like 70,000 miles and this was made back in 2010, but this was like their flagship. So, you know, they put all of the first features in this car and then it kind of trickled down to the lower models so that's why I was able to get a really good deal on it but get a really nice and comfortable car the only thing that I don't like about it is it has the N52 like I said which is really slow so I'd love to upgrade that to something a little more powerful maybe a B58 in the future you know we'll see but other than that the car has been great for its specific use you know and I love this is probably my favorite part the dirty panoramic sunroof I'm a really big fan of sunroof, so having this has been awesome just to drive around with the family or whatever we're doing. Anyway, so my last car is over here. Um, I do have an oversized three-car garage, so my project car is kind of shoehorned in here, and I've got boxes on it and stuff because it's kind of just being used for storage right now. Um, so I'll pull the X5 out and then pull out my project car and walk you around that as well. All right, so here it is. This is my 2009 GLI. This is the car that you always see kind of in the background of the B58 Digest and some of my other videos. I know you guys kind of see it off to the side and always ask what's going on with this car. And so this is what it is. Now, right now it's not really in the best state because to be honest, it's in the process of getting parted out. And, you know, I kind of had my time with this car. It's just time to move on. So unfortunately, I won't be making any content with it or anything in the future. And I know some of you guys were kind of curious about it. But let's kind of just go through it so I can show you guys how this car kind of taught me everything or a lot of what I know through just trial and error and following development and stuff. But anyway, yeah, 2009 GLI, we've got wing, carbon fiber trunk, the interior is completely stripped out. So I have a welded in roll bar and then I just have two Sparkos and a OMP steering wheel. So as light as I could possibly get it, because again, this was made for the road course. So I wanted everything to help improve handling and, you know, just make the car as quick as possible. But yeah, pretty simple. Stripped out. And then we can kind of come to the front and see the real business. But like you see, it's not really in the best state, but you still kind of get the picture of what was going on. So this is the Gen 1 TSI engine. I do have rods in there. And then I've also got the six-speed manual transmission with a wave track LSD. I've got my AccuSump oil accumulator to help prevent me from starving the engine of oil in high G turns. And then we also have a big turbo kit. So this is a Garrett GTX 30. Pretty big for this little two liter motor. Um, the car as it sits is around like 370 or 380 wheel horsepower. It's completely stock direct injection system. So it has the stock injectors and stock high pressure fuel pump. I just have an upgraded low pressure fuel pump uh, to help make sure that it doesn't run out of fuel. But yeah, I would need to upgrade a lot of stuff fueling wise to actually make this car make over 400 wheel horsepower. And that's when I kind of lost motivation to keep putting money in the engine. So I just kind of let it stay there. But yeah, I mean, a lot of things going on with this car. I went through multiple cash can setups. I went through multiple um, 
you know, bolt-ons, different downpipes, different, a, a whole bunch of stuff. I just kept swapping parts because I kept hearing that something else was better. And that's when I realized a lot of it was just kind of blowing smoke. And so I really learned how these engines work, what they really need to make good power safely. And ultimately, that's what led me to this point. So, yeah, that's why I kind of went crazy with this car. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it was time to move on. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can see this is where a lot of my knowledge came from. I even did like a fuse box tuck. So that's how I got familiar with electronics and pinning connectors and all of that good stuff. So, yeah, this is kind of what I'm working with. But I hope this answers a lot of your questions at the end of the day. What works for me doesn't work for everybody. So this is just kind of a little insight to what I have going on. Oh, and you can see the carbon fiber hood. And this is the front bumper. I have a carbon fiber lip on it as well. But yeah, that's what we got. So I hope this video kind of explains everything for you guys that are wondering what else I have in my garage and why I have multiple cars and why I think, you know, having multiple cars is a great option for, you know, car guys that have a lot of specific goals but don't want one car to do everything. And I hope this helps you guys out. If you guys have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.